using the micropipette. You must wear safety goggles and gloves during this exercise. We'll start by looking at the agarus gel and the plastic gel that we'll use to practice. They both have rectangular openings that we call wells. The bottoms are sealed so they can hold a tiny amount of liquid. The plastic gel is sturdy and rubbery. We'll rinse these and reuse them for years. This is the agarus gel that we'll use in the electrophoresis chamber. They're slippery and flexible. This one is for the charged dyes, so the wells are along the center. One thing you need to know, it's soft and it's easy to poke through the bottom of the well. If that happens, your sample will leak out and be lost. Don't touch the tip to the bottom of the well, even in practice. We store the gels in bags with some buffer solution to keep them hydrated. Because of that, we don't get air trapped in the wells like sometimes happens with the plastic gels. Before we look at the micropipette, I'm going to prepare the practice gel by filling the plastic tray that it's in with enough water to cover the surface of the gel. The water is going to mimic the effect of the buffer that we'll use in the real chamber later. The liquid causes some refraction that can make it tricky to find the opening of the well. Let's look at the micropipette. I've got two here. There's a hook on the side near the top. You'll rest that on the side of your hand to help keep the micropipette steady. The main body of the micropipette is called the barrel. This round part on top, like the clicker on an ink pen, is the plunger. You push it down to expel air from the tip, creating a vacuum. There are a couple of common ways for the volume of a micropipette to be adjusted. This one has a separate inset dial. When you turn it, the numbers on the readout turn. This micropipette doesn't seem to have a dial at all. How do you adjust the volume? The secret to this one is that the plunger is also the dial. If you turn it, the numbers on the readout change. The third digit is the tenths place. They've made it red to remind you. The most important warning about using these micropipettes is never turn the dial lower than 2 microliters or higher than 20 microliters. If the dial is turned too far, the piston assembly will bend and the micropipette will be broken. Now we need to put a yellow tip on. These tips cover the end and should be the only thing that comes in contact with the solution. The tips are color coded and yellow is the color of the size that fits this micropipette. This larger micropipette uses blue tips. The box holds the tips upright to make it easy to put a fresh tip on as you're working. When you come in, the box should be full. After you're done, please use the extra tips bag to refill the box. To put a yellow tip on, put the end into the tip, press down, and give it a little twist. If the tip falls off onto the table, you can put it back into the box and try again. If it falls onto the floor, consider it contaminated and throw it out. Now we're going to find the first stop. If you're in the lab while you're watching this, take turns in your group right now so that you can each feel where the first stop is. Press the plunger down slowly, and you'll feel it travel easily until it resists. This is the first stop. If you squeeze a little harder, you can get it to travel further before it stops again. That's the second stop. Release completely and try again. First stop, second stop. First stop, second stop. The amount of travel before the first stop depends on the volume it's set to. The bigger the volume, the further the plunger will travel before you hit the first stop. This one is set for 10 microliters. It's got quite a bit of travel. This pipette is set for 3.5 microliters, so about a third of the volume. There's the first stop. There's the second stop. Now we're ready to practice, but see how bright and shiny the surfaces of the wells are? That tells us they have air in them. We'll use the micropipette to pull the air out of them so that there's room for the dye. We can set the dial high. Around 10 microliters is good. Get a yellow tip. Squeeze the plunger to the second stop 
and put it into a well with a bubble. Release the plunger to take up air. Repeat two or three times in each well. You'll each want to clear out several wells so that you have plenty of room to practice. Now, since we've used this tip, we'll consider it contaminated and dispose of it. You never want to introduce a foreign substance, even water, into your stock solution. We'll use the tip ejector to do that with one hand. This button pushes the metal bar down and pops the tip off. Set up your workspace before you get started. It's a good idea to put a paper towel down to put the dies on to keep from making a mess. Open the tube of dye and set the lid aside on the paper towel. Check your gloves. Yep, I've got dye on mine. Wipe that off on a paper towel. Check that your micropipette is set to the right volume. 3.5 microliters for the practice dye. We'll get a new tip and start loading dye into wells. Press the plunger down to the first stop and hold. Put the tip into the dye. Slowly release the plunger. Pull the tip out and put the dye back into the rack so that it doesn't spill. Rest your elbow on the table if possible to keep your hand steady. Put the tip into the well. Squeeze to the first stop. Lift the tip out then release the plunger. If you release before the tip is out of the buffer, you may pull some of the dye back up. One more time. Get a yellow tip. Press the plunger to the first stop and hold. Put the tip in the dye and release. Tip into the well. Squeeze to the first stop. Lift out, then release. Don't forget to fill up the tips box. and you can empty the used tip speaker in the trash.